Welcome to another unboxing from theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. Today we are unboxing a game that I just received this week and a game from last year in 2016 that was released. This game is called The Pacific War from Pearl Harbor to the Philippines. So with that in mind, uh, the game covers the period of obviously December 7th, 1941, when the, Jap the Japanese Navy surprise attacked Pearl Harbor, and it goes through the end of 1944. Uh, as we know, the Japanese did not surrender until August of 45, but the game covers 44 because I think that's, it's really focused on the, uh, the naval side. And I think after 1944, it really turned into more of island hopping uh, going from, you know, Midway, Saipan, uh, to Okinawa, and really the, the war changed. So this game is purported to cover uh, that time frame. It is from Lock and Load Publishing. We'll go ahead and rip off the, uh, the plastic that I pre-cut. I don't know why I need I feel the need to rip off the plastic in these unboxings. It's Probably I, I need to go ahead and open it, pre-open it, so that I understand the rules a little bit before I go into uh, any uh, depth with you. Uh, here's a look at the back of the box. Really nice colors. Here's kind of an up-close look at some of the counters that I will show you later. There are lots of naval uh, units. There are aircraft on both sides. So it's really kind of a cool game. I'm pretty excited about it. You can see on the bottom here, it is recommended for 12 plus. It's a two player game and takes two to four hours to complete. Solitaire suitability is fairly low uh, and the complexity is, is low as well. Um, kind of a neat looking game. I've, I've had it on my list for a while. This is actually my first lock and load game. I've seen them several times at Origins went up and talked to David Heath a couple of times and, and I just never bought anything uh, until I got my hands on this. So pretty exciting. I enjoy the Pacific theater of World War II and wargaming. So I look forward to this one. Here's a, a look at the spine. Really nice looking box. I like the, you have the Empire of Japan and the Japanese battle flag here with the, uh, the Yamamoto and uh, on the bottom, you can see the smoke, uh, smoking wrecks of the uh, naval units at Pearl Harbor and the American uh, symbol. So really kind of a cool box. I think it looks great. Uh, personally, love, love the colors. So nice presentation. Um, first time you open the box, you obviously have some dice, red and, and uh, blue. Nice little dice. I'm not a huge fan of dice that use rounded corners. You can see it does have rounded corners. You might ask why I don't. They tend to roll forever. I want something that's sharper and that is going to stop. Uh, but these are nice die. They're clear. Once again, they're, they're dice. Here is a, a small pack of, of action cards. The game is billed as a battle card driven uh, game. Actually, I'm, I'm a little surprised to, to open this then and find that there appears to be about 10 or 12 cards. So I'm, I'm surprised by that. But once again, uh, we'll, we'll look forward to reading through the rules and understanding. That's an awesome picture. That's some awesome art. You can see that eagle dropping the large bomb there and the eagle has the American star on it. Really cool concept. Great looking cards. So if you flip those cards over, um, they have numbers, J1, J01 through J16. So there are 16 cards. They also appear to be double-sided, or not double-sided, dual-sided. You can see at the top, the Japanese event is listed. This says the Battle of Iwo Jima. And then if you flip that card over, you're gonna see that it says George C. Kennedy, and that's an American event. All of the cards appear to be that way. They also, you'll notice, uh, these tell you when you can play uh, this card. This says during the strategy phase. This says during a, a port invasion. Here's one that says strategic event. So obviously in the sequence of play, there's going to be different phases where you can, can or cannot 
uh, or are not allowed or allowed to play these cards. Here's one of the, a look at the American. Uh, this looks like a table. It doesn't refer to when, when you can use them. Um, there's one that says strategic event, use at the start of a combat, use during the port invasion. So you're going to get a certain amount of these cards every turn and then use them to conduct uh, your turn. So nice looking cards, love that art. I'm gonna say that art is, is incredibly awesome. I'm a sucker for good production and a nice looking game. And this is, at this point, this game looks really, really nice. So once again, the Pacific War from Pearl Harbor to the Philippines, game manual version 1.0. I don't know if there's been any living updates uh, to it. This is really heavy duty cardboard stock for the cover, uh, car or card stock, I'm sorry. That's not going to bend easily and it's going to uh, wear a little better than thinner material. <coughs> Inside it is semi-gloss. Um, the rules don't appear to be very dense, guys. This uh, rule book has very big writing. It also appears to have a lot of, of drawing drawings showing how to play the game 41 pages you can see that that's a great looking picture of a aircraft carrier um, really cool <coughs> so anyway you can see lots of examples this is a combat example uh, here's a look at some of the game markers that you're going to use from victory points to movement points control of ports Here's some of those units that we're gonna take a look at here in a minute. I love naval combat, I also love air combat. I enjoy World War II games that incorporate that. We are big fans of Empire of the Sun from GMT Games, designed by Mark Herman, and we love the air naval combat uh, in those games. So rules don't look that bad. I think uh, this one's gonna be an easy one to get through and hopefully get to the table. I'm gonna to try to check out a video would love to play it this weekend uh, and, and do a video on our uh, initial, initial thoughts. So you'll notice here it does refer to the cards as resource cards. Um, so that's what they call them in the game. So there's a look at the rule book. Uh, really, once again, nice looking, nice looking production. Really like that. And here's the, here's the part that gets me excited, counters. I love counters. These are really big one inch counters. Um, very, very thick uh, counters. These are really good stock. Kind of get you, to, yeah, it's hard to see. But they are really, really fall off the bones easily. Here's a look at the Hagudo, uh, which appears to be a destroyer of some type or maybe a battleship. Its combat movement values are there on the left. I'm not sure what uh, what they are. It is a two-sided unit. I don't know. Yep, looks like all of them are two-sided units. The back sides are black. And the cool thing about the counters, you'll notice the Japanese counters have the battle flag in the center and the American counters have the star. So it's very easy to tell. Uh, but some really nice looking counters. They're, they're going to come out really easy. And you know what? While I love clipping, it's very therapeutic for me. This game does not require clipping. These are pre-rounded counters, and I think that's really awesome. Very well done. The uh, only thing I would say is the names of the boats are very small. The cool thing is, and once again, I lived in Japan and know a little Japanese, these kanji are the names of those ships. And no, I can't read every single one of those kanjis. Here, the Japanese hira, hiragana is used which is the way that they write foreign words in their language. So this one is called the Tennessee, and that is the Tennessee, uh, literally written out phonetically. Um, that's kind of cool, a very cool thematic element that not everyone's going to pick up on, but I think that's pretty nifty. Those are some really nice looking ships. Here's the aircraft carriers. Let me kind of go down the line. You got the Lexington, the Saratoga, the Yorktown, the Enterprise, the Hornet, those are really awesome, awesome looking counters. Here's some of the battleships in the center. Here's some more uh, large, or I'm sorry, large battleships. Um, there's Japanese carriers. There's the Japanese Yamato, the battleship. I said Yamamoto on the front, I'm, I apologize. Uh, the aircraft carriers, really nice looking counters. Uh, so there's a look at those. Here's another sheet, so there are three full sheets of counters, and there may be more, I just haven't dug 
Nope, there are three sheets of counters. So you've probably got 125 counters, give or take. And you got about 200 counters, give or take there, but these are really nice. Here's the aircraft, long range bombers, really cool looking detail. Love the, love the colors. Uh, there's the blue for the Navy. Here's the American green for the Air Force. That's, those are British. Uh, or, or there's British somewhere, and those are Japanese right there. Really cool. I need to look at these a little better. Um, yeah, here's some of the other. I knew they were on here. Sorry about that. There's some British ships uh, right there. So kind of cool. Really excited about this one. I think this game looks very fun. I believe that initiative is a very important part of the game. You get to go first or choose your opponent to go first. So that should be kind of cool. Here is a battle card. So when battle is conducted, you're going to line your units up and go through the, the battle sequence. So kind of cool. On the back, uh, this is a player aid showing some of the movement, what designates control of an area. So kind of a simple, uh, simple player aid. Not a whole lot. And then here is the map, and it's a big one. Not a mounted map, but it is cardboard stock. So it's going to uh, play well. It's going to have to be folded, folded out a little bit, and made sure that it uh, lays flat. But really nice looking map. Um, you can see the size of it. It's, it's a big one. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back just to show you. That's a good size map. It's a map of obviously the Pacific Theater stretching from Japan on the north. Uh, looks like it has links over to the Aleutian Islands. Uh, then it goes down to Australia on the south. On the west, it goes to uh, Malaysia, the Philippines, etc., Singapore. Even Madagascar is shown there on the very far left. And then the Hawaiian Isle Islands constitute the right side of the board. You can see there's the Hawaiian Islands, and here's the west coast of the United States. Samoa is even listed there. So there's Guadalcanal in New Guinea. Uh, you can see Port Moresby and the Solomon Islands, Rabal. So really a, a, big, a big map, uh, lots of information there. On the upper left, you can see a turn track as well as a victory point track. Some of those markers that we showed earlier are going to track that. And then there is an initiative determination flow chart. And it, I, I don't, once again, I could read it to you. I don't know that that's, that's important, but it is a flow chart to help you understand who has initiative. Uh, other player aids, sequence of play. One of the things we always talk about in war games is, is the sequence of play clearly identified? Typically on the board, if there's room, that's the best. If not, is it clearly identified on player aids? So this game doesn't appear to have a lot of player aids because a lot of the information is printed on the board. Here is the combat results uh, chart, or CR, CRC it would be, but normally it's a CRT. Uh, you can see it is, it's not odds based, it's a, you get a basic number of dice and then you're rolling on your attack strength total. You can see the attack strength at the top end uh, totals out at 31. Uh, at the low end, it starts at 1. So the dice roll, not the number of dice, but the dice roll. So if you're a, a 31 plus and you roll a 1, you're doing 5 points of damage. If you roll a 6, you're going to do 9. Um, so it obviously rewards a lot of units. Um, I don't know if those CRTs are the same. They probably are. But really a nice looking game. I'm, I'm excited about it. It's a game, once again, that I've, I've looked at for quite a while. And because of my obsession with the Pacific Theater, I've wanted to play it uh, for quite a long time. So I wanted, I wanted to, I, first off, I wanted to thank David Heath uh, with Lock and Load Games. He did send these games to us uh, to, to review. We will give an honest, thorough, and straightforward review. Um, and once again, we review these games based on, and we've said this time and time again, based on how they feel to play. Are they fun? Do they work well? Does the theme come through? Is the game understandable and playable, most importantly? We've played a lot of war games that aren't 
playable. I mean, they either the counter density is too high or they're just too difficult. We look for low to moderate level or difficulty games. Don't get me wrong. We like a heavy duty game once in a while, uh, but really our game's playable and that's what we'll try to highlight in our reviews. So there's a look at the Pacific War from Lock and Load Publishing. We'll try to get this one to the table soon and get it played. Uh, probably do an initial thoughts and reaction video. And then after a couple of plays, try to do a more thorough written review. We also like to do action points where we take headlines. We use an online headline generator and kind of re rehash the history of our game in the context of the overall history of the war. Um, something we enjoy doing. So there you go. There's a look at the game. Uh, once again, the Pacific War. I'm excited about this one. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. And if you want to check out more further in-depth reviews, visit our website at theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. Thank you.